We're in New Zealand on our fourth international RV trip. Our first was to Australia. Then we went to England. And then to Italy. And now we're here with our friends and co-hosts of the RVers, Tom and Kate of Morton's On The Move. That's them parked next to us, right behind us. And we're going to take you on a tour of our motorhome. The first thing we notice that's different up here is, of course, this is a right-hand drive vehicle. We drive on the left-hand side of the road, so all vehicles here are right-hand drive. There are a couple of touches up here that make navigating those roads a little easier. One of the greatest things is this little device right here. We've never seen something quite like this before, but you can take your iPad and put it in here and lock it in and now we can use our ipad for navigating and keep it powered up and it stays clearly visible and in place and if we don't have an ipad and you want to use your iphone instead no problem this works for either one you can get your power plug in the bottom because it's open here smart design we use this every day when we're on the road and folds right back down when we're done if you're seeing this here, this is not anything that comes on the RV. The reason we did that is because these are silver all the way up and around, and we've been putting cameras up in the windshield here, and the reflections we were getting were a problem in the cameras, so we put this black tape on here just to reduce the glare. We've seen different types of window blinds in different RVs that are here, and these are the best we've seen so far. They come in from each side, cross to the middle, and they magnetize right in the center. Now we had that same exact kind of setup in our rig in Italy, and we thought they were really cool. Burstner's done a little bit better job. The side windows over here, I'm gonna show you this side window over here and how it works. This is a really neat design. You just pull forward on this, and it clicks right in. And that is superior to the type that fan down like we had in Italy, not only is this easier to put into place, it does a really complete job of blocking the window for privacy. And also when we park in a really sunny spot where it's hot out and we wanna keep the heat out, we just close these and it keeps it cooler in here and opens just as easily. Pushes right back. The driver and passenger seats up here, of course, swivel around exactly as they do in just about every type of rig like this. There's plenty of room around the table for four people or five even. Tom and Kate come over for dinner sometimes or we'll go over to their RV. The table gets bigger by using this handle down underneath. You just pull down on that and the table swings out and we can make it quite a bit bigger. It's uh, similar again to what we had in Italy, just a different implementation of it. And now we have a table that for a small RV like this is incredibly big. It's actually bigger than our table on our own 43 foot motorhome. That gets put away the same way, pull down on the handle, swing it back in, and now we're ready for travel. Also the table can be moved forward and backward by lifting up and just sliding the table along and you can change how much space there is on either side. And of course, since these are driver and passenger seats, they can pull up and back to the table too. The windows, the screens, the shades here, again, very similar to what we've seen in other European style RVs. The screens go up and down like that, or you can get complete privacy or any level you want. They work together as a team. And the windows are lightweight, easy to open and close. You close them like this. They latch down with four latches here, one thing that's different than in Italy is for extra security, these windows won't unlatch this way without pushing the button on the front of them. There's also a security position right here. This is fully locked, but if we open the window a small amount here and go into this track, now the window is held open where there's a little bit of air coming through, but you have complete security because no one can open that. Now, if you want to open them further, just push up and you'll hear them click 
and they'll stay out however far you want them to go. And you can get a lot of air in here like that. And of course, you'll want to close the screen down once you do that. And also because the windows go up, we don't have to worry about it raining in. Even if it were really windy, all we have to do to bring the window down is push up and it drops down and we can set the window like this. Now, if we want more airflow, more light, we have a skylight up here that's huge up on the front of the RV. Again, not to keep referring back to Italy, but European style RVs have a lot of similarities. And this is one of them, this big window up here. Now this can be completely closed off with the blind or we can have a screen. And the reason of course you need a screen is because the window can be opened just like the others. We've got the same security latches here with the push button on top, push them up. These need to be rotated and locked into place. And now we can have the screen open, light, air, no problem. Obviously you won't keep this open while you're driving. One of the most useful spots we found on this rig is right above the driver's seat. It's this shelving area up here. If you've got lots of gadgets, camera gear, for example, like we do, we've been keeping the most common stuff that we use, our tripods, our cameras, everything up here, cases for things. It's been super helpful to have everything so easily accessible right at hand whenever we want it. This rig happens to be a four passenger rig called the Alpine 4, that's the floor plan. And this is a drop-down bed, and I'll show you how that works over here. It's very much like other drop-down beds you've seen. Just push the button and down it comes. Now, I'm not gonna put it all the way down because we need to move the backrests here to get out of the way, but this will drop down. I'll put it a little further so you can see it. Queen-size bed up here. We have a total of four skylights on board three in the main area here, one in the bedroom, one over the kitchen, one over the extra bed, plus there's one in the bathroom. Now the three out here all work the same way. There's a shade over it so you can have complete darkness. You can open it up by pushing in on this button right here. We can lower this handle down and we can go into several different positions like this. We can open it all the way up if we want to. It's windy out right now, so we're going to use this latch position here where we lift up these latches on the side. We latch these down, and now this is locked in. So even when it's windy, we don't have to worry about it. Of course, we don't want bugs coming in, so we can close the screen if we want to as well. Here's the kitchen where we have typical Euro styling stainless steel sink, a flip up top on the range, three burners, this starts exactly as we're used to. Simply turn the button, push the igniter, and we have our burners. Down here, right below the kitchen counter, we have maybe the most adorable little propane oven we've ever seen. There's also a sliding drawer here. It's perfect for wine, olive oil, any other bottles you need to keep around. The water pump on this rig is actually a little different than anything we've seen before in a good way. Normally when you turn on the water in an on-demand water pump system, it senses the water flow begins to move and then the pump reprimes. And that's where you get that sound that you hear typically on your regular North American motorhome where you have that cycling sound coming from the pump. This doesn't have that. It actually has electric sensors in each of the faucets and as you turn them on when you first go to lift the faucet on even before it starts to run you can hear the motor and the motor is now running at a steady state and what that does is not only avoid the cycling that goes on from the up and down it also avoids the surging of water that goes with that cycling. When we turn this faucet on and the electric motor comes on, it makes it very, very easy to control the amount of water flowing out of here. And before we go into the back to the bathroom and the bedroom, I'll show you some of the electronics that we have here. And one of the most important for what we do, and probably most other people as well, is an inverter. This rig has a built-in inverter 
that allows us to charge our camera batteries and our laptops, cell phone, iPad, other small devices, and powers off the battery, of course, converted in this case to 240 volts, because remember, this is European design, and everything here runs off 240, not 120. Here's our inverter control down here, and you can see we have an adapter that we use here that allows us to plug in. There's an on-off switch here, and interestingly here, similar again to Europe, up is off and down is on. Electric outlets are usually switched. In many places in the world, there are power switches next to electric outlets where you individually turn the power on and off to the outlets, and that's exactly what this rig has here. Between this converter that takes the 240 volt power and switches it to 120, and this adapter up here that has USB plugs and regular US style 120 volt plugs on it, we can power a whole bunch of things. We even use a little USB hub so we can charge up multiple charging sticks, our lavalier microphones, and lots of other things. This one spot here gives us tons of power options, and there are other plugs in the RV as well. Now, when we're plugged into shore power, we don't need the inverter, of course. We have powered outlets inside that get their power from the pedestal in the RV park. But since we're doing mostly freedom camping, we've been depending on our inverter here to do the job. The battery gets recharged every time we drive the rig. This is a lot like a Class B RV in North America, where driving the alternator charges up your house batteries. It's the same thing here. Now, Tom and Kate's rig is a little newer than ours even and happens to have a solar panel on it. So there have been a couple of times when we've stayed in one spot for a couple of days where we haven't been charging the battery by driving and we were doing a lot of shooting. So Tom and Kate were kind enough to let us plug our batteries in over there because their solar panel was doing all the heavy lifting when it came to recharging. Up here right inside the door, we have our control center with everything we need here. And on this one here, we've got a button that will show us what our battery level is. And you can see we're at 12.2 at the moment. We've been here for a while without moving, so our house batteries are getting close to needing charging. Here we have our chassis battery. And of course that stays up good and high all the time. This button here will shut the entire system down. If I push this button, this light here will go off and our entire electrical system will shut down. Right up here we have our tank capacities. So this button here shows that we have 50% in our fresh water tank. The one at the bottom shows we're 25% full on the gray tank. And this button here simply turns our water pump on and off. Over on this side, we have our heating and hot water system. This is by Truma. We've used these before. And if we push and hold this button, it's going to show us house heating, water heating. This is whether we're using propane or electric, so we can actually get heat in the house from a power pedestal. Okay, if we want to shut that off, we can turn it all the way down. A nice feature about the house heat is when you warm up the house, it also heats hot water. You don't specifically have to turn hot water on to get it. We also have a television. We haven't watched that much although we did screen a movie on it by using the HDMI plug in the back and feeding from our laptop. And there's also a DVD player built into the side of it here. Now, if we want, we can swing this out so we don't have to stand over there in the driver's seat or sit in the driver's seat to watch it. The reason we could watch TV on it through our laptop is because this rig has Wi-Fi, cellular data Wi-Fi built in. That's something that Wilderness offers on their rigs. We've had Wi-Fi on board anywhere that cellular data has been available. And in some of the remote areas, way out on the west coast of the South Island particularly, it's been too remote to get any kind of signal. But just about everywhere else, while we've been cruising down the highway, our rig has been a rolling hotspot where we've been able to get data to our laptops, cell phone, iPad, all right from here. These are various light switches down here and there are lots of lighting options up here. So we can light right over the table or the whole house, whatever we wanna do. Down below near the doorway, we have a perfect place to keep our dustpan and whisk broom. 
The garbage is right over here. And there's a neat little spot in the floor here that's hidden. And that has a good place to put dirty things like shoes, or Tevas are in here. There's even a safe. Just like every other European style RV we've been on, the cabinetry is beautiful. It's something we wish US manufacturers would take a look at. They're slightly curved. They're beautiful, light colored, very clean design. We love them and there's plenty of room in them. And of course, just like every other rental RV, this comes with what you need. Dishes, glassware, they even have wilderness branded mugs that come with them, which have been perfect for coffee and tea. Wine glasses, which we have made liberal use of and lots of other storage around. The drawers are automatic closing and latching, which we really like. When you open these and then reclose them, they close and latch all on their own. Our refrigerator is a three-way fridge. It can run off propane, 12 volts DC when we're driving down the road, or 240 volt shore power when we're hooked up at an RV park. And it's got pretty decent space in here. We've got uh, room in there for a few things in the freezer, including ice cream, of course. And we have some Bundaberg ginger beer in there. You got to have that when you come to this part of the world. This is the main power switch right here. We can default to shore power, propane, 12 volt, or automatic, which is what we're in right now. And the, this tells us that we're in automatic mode, burning propane. And the reason for that is we're not hooked up to shore power or driving. If we were to start driving in automatic mode, it would automatically switch over to use the 12 volt battery since the alternator was sending power to it. If we were to hook up at an RV park, it would automatically switch over to 240 volt AC power. Let's take you into the bathroom, or at least as best we can. The bathroom isn't large, but it does have one thing that we find highly desirable, and that is a dry bath. That means that when you take a shower, you don't get the toilet and the sink and a floor and everything else all wet. A couple of things worth noting in the bathroom. One is the toilet, even though when you look at it, it looks like there's no room to use it because it's too close to the wall. It's actually not that bad because it swivels and now you can sit on it with the door closed. It's still small in here. It's not, an, you know, it obviously isn't a 43 foot motorhome, but it works. And it's a typical cassette style toilet. We've been used to that from all the other trips we've taken everywhere else in the world. They use the cassette system and that's just the way it is. Again, the shower isn't especially large, but it's big enough to get the job done and a rig this size, there's only so much space but having the dry bath makes a big difference. And one thing that's particularly smart at the bottom, which is something similar to what we saw in Italy, are two drains. So if you're not perfectly level, you've got a drain over in two opposing corners so that the water won't pool up very much, no matter how you're situated. This one also has a rough surface on the floor, a non-skid surface. That was one issue we had with our last rental RV is that the floor was so smooth it was dangerously slippery, particularly if you weren't on a really level spot. One other feature in here is there's a heating outlet inside the shower itself and a vent to the outside up on the ceiling. All you need to do is pull this bar down and you can hang a wet bathing suit on this, turn on the heat, close the shower door and this will act as a drying area by blowing warm air into the shower up and out the roof. Tom and Kate have an almost identical RV to this one. They have the Cruise 4 model. And up until this point right here, it's exactly the same as ours. What's different in this floor plan is the bed arrangement. Theirs has a peninsula bed that is situated in the center and you can walk around either side. Ours has the break in the center and there's a bed on each side and you can put a separator piece in here to turn this into one giant bed back here. There's also lots of storage back here. This is a floor to ceiling linen closet. It's got lots of room for clothes, extra linens and bedding. We have extra water down there at the bottom. Lots of space in there. 
And then back here, there are large storage areas on each side. So down in here, we can swing this door out. And we have room in there for luggage, our laptop bags, dirty laundry. You can also use the hangers in the top as a wardrobe, but we've kept all our clothes folded and haven't needed to use that. Now, maybe you're wondering why there's a hinge on this door. Why would this door be hinged? Well, there's a reason. Down low back here, we have extra storage here where we can keep shoes or other foldable items and an extra step, which allows us to step up into bed without having to climb. You don't need a ladder. So this stairway here makes it really easy to get in and out, but sometimes it's in the way. So during the day, we can push it in and close it out of the way. But when it's out, there's storage inside it. Again, they've used every little nook and cranny, but now without this hinge in the door, this wouldn't have opened. So that's why this door is hinged right here. So when this step is out, and if you want, you can close that step and now the whole door will open. Very versatile and convertible. Over on the other side, we have similar space, drawers with room for linens and more clothes. And lastly, all the way in the back, there's cabinets all across the top. Up here, where, what else? More clothing. Up here at the head of the bed, there's cubbies. Good places to put eyeglasses, a bottle of water, whatever you might need during the evening, your cell phone. A good example of how they've used just about every square inch of this rig in some useful fashion is this spot right here, where they have a little diagonal edge about five inches wide. And instead of just leaving it as wall, they turned it into a full length mirror. Now we're gonna go outside and John is gonna give you a tour of the exterior of the rig. On the outside, this Wilderness Motorhomes rental is very much like the unit we had in Italy. And that includes the chassis, which is a Fiat Ducato. It runs with a diesel engine, and that's very much like what we had there. The only difference being that, of course, here we are right-hand drive, and it is an automatic transmission, not a manual. So that's a big help. But the rest of the house was built by Burstner. So while it looks similar to what we had, it's you know, a little bit different because of the manufacturer building the RV part. One of the nice features, of course, we had similar in Italy, this door has a built-in screen. So without having to have two separate pieces, just to slide the screen across, and now you can have lots of airflow without having any bugs come in. The step on this unit is electric, but unlike what we have on our RV in North America, it's not automatic coming in with the door opening and closing. There is a separate switch just inside the door for extending or retracting the step. Just folds right back in under the RV or quickly extends when you need it. Luckily, they've included a light on the dash, so if you leave the step extended and start the engine, the light comes on so you know you didn't retract the step. Right next to the main door is the access panel for the cassette toilet. And if you open that up, you can see right here, here is the cassette. Same as what we've had in most other European style RVs. Lift this little handle and it releases it so that you can just pull the cassette out. It has an extension handle on it and you can now wheel it to the dump station if you're leaving the RV parked where it is or just bring it around to wherever you need to dump. This little panel right above the toilet cassette door is an access panel for propane. Now our grill that we have with this unit doesn't connect to this style connector, but of course if you bought one of these RVs and were using it yourself, you'd have easy access to having your grill set up right outside the door. That's a nice, nice touch, nice addition. Instead of connecting our barbecue grill directly to the RV, Wilderness provides us with a second small tank that we can use, so it actually makes it easy for us to put the grill wherever we need to, and since we're traveling with Tom and Kate, it makes it easy to move them wherever we need. All the way back here at the very back of the RV, there's a large access door that you can see here, and this is access to the garage storage. If you take a look inside there, you can see how large this really is. It's full height all the way up through the door. It actually extends up beyond here. Uh, and there's plenty of room. We're using it clearly for luggage storage and right now our bags of garbage since we've been freedom camping for a while. Um, but it comes with storage for the table, the chairs, and our barbecue all right in here. 
Uh, this little piece here, this is our extra piece for the bed. So if we wanted to make the two twin beds into one larger bed, this is what would insert into that little space. And there's also two ladders in here, one for the rear bed, if you make that up into the one single bed, because now you're blocking that pullout step. And then the other one for the front drop down bed so that you can get up into that. This is a bit of a mess in here, but that is definitely one of the luxuries of being on vacation and not living full time. We have the ability to just toss some stuff in here and not worry about how organized it is. But the space back here is huge. It's been a really great help, especially since we're traveling with a lot of camera gear. It gives us room to put our luggage back in here. Now, as part of our rental, we also added on the bikes. So this gave us the ability to get around when we were parked in places where we had access to ride. Um, since we don't have a tow car, it meant we didn't have to then break camp from the RV in order to get to where we wanted to go. So the bikes are clamped on here. When you take the bikes off, the rack actually folds up against the back of the RV really cleanly. So that makes the RV a little bit shorter if you need that. Another nice feature included is the backup camera. Definitely a big help in maneuvering this into tight parking spaces at grocery stores when you're out running errands. Over on the passenger side of the RV here at the back, there's another door. Again, big access. This is completely pass through. So just like we showed on the other side, we have more things stored. This is our grill. This bag here contains our fresh water hose and our gray dumping hose. Uh, we have our chairs, our bike helmets, lots of stuff tossed in here. Again, plenty of room if you were using this for more than just a holiday trip you've got room to put a lot of stuff. As we come farther forward on this side, the first door we come to is the propane locker. Lift this up, latches into place, and we have our two propane tanks. The larger of the two is the one that's hardwired into the RV. That's providing our propane for our cooktop, for the oven, and for the refrigerator, as well as for our heat and hot water through the Truma Combi. The other little propane tank is the one that's available for use with the barbecue grill. It's nice and handy because it's small and light and we can put it wherever we need. But in an emergency, if we were to run out of propane in the larger tank, we can always tap into the small one as well and use that to get us through the night until we can get to a spot to fill. In the three and a half weeks we've been out on the road in this RV so far, we've had to fill this tank up twice. It's currently full right now because we did just refill it. But that includes considerable amount of time spent in some colder weather where we've had to run the heat overnight in order to stay warm. So that's pretty impressive that we've only had to refill this twice so far. Right down below the propane locker is the gray valve. So this is the gray outlet where all of the gray water drains out. And just to the right of that, there's the little key where you use to open the valve in order to release the gray water out of the tank. The fitting on this is a really nice bayonet style fitting. So it's very secure. And that way you can run your hose over to wherever the dump station itself is. Now, again, this is just the gray water. Having the gray and the black separated like that is a little different than what we're used to in North America. On motorhomes like this, you typically would have a single outlet you would hook your sewer hose to, and then you'd open your black and then your gray valves in order to dump out through the one opening. These are totally separated. Gray comes out here, and of course the black is in your cassette. Because this is only gray water coming out through here, the opening is significantly smaller, and as a result, so is the hose. Much smaller diameter than what we're used to with the larger sewer hoses in North America. Attached to this is the little handle for the key. This is what we use to actually open the gray valve to start dumping. This is the water and power compartment. One thing that's particularly handy is the water tank, the fresh water tank, is literally visible right here through the door. So at any point in time, you can see your water level. So as you can see right here on the side of the tank, the tank is about half full. So our monitor panel was telling us correctly, our fresh tank is half full. Just like in other places we've traveled with European style RVs, there is no way to connect city water to the RV in order to pressurize the plumbing and run directly off city water. You're always running using the water pump off of your tank. So the only fill is a gravity fill right here. The way to fill the tank is just to take this cap off. You put this spout over it, which catches any drips from overfilling the tank and make sure they direct outside the compartment so you don't flood inside. And then you just connect a fresh water hose to the spigot and insert the other end, which doesn't have any attachment mechanism right in here to fill. This is 120 liters of fresh water. So it doesn't really take very long to fill. And again, like we mentioned, we get about four days worth of showering and cooking on board. New Zealand operates on 240 volt AC power like most of the rest of the world. And that means this thin little cable carries the equivalent power to a 30 amp cable in North America. 
makes it much easier to hook up because the cord is easier to manage and operating at higher voltage means it's operating at lower amps, which means the cable has less power loss across it and you can have longer cords to connect to the grid. Makes it very easy to connect the RV. This is what the plugs look like here and one end connects right into the side of the RV inside this compartment and the other end goes into the pedestal. There's a notch in the lip of the door here so you can route the cable out through the door and still close it without damaging the cable. So right here, this is the diesel fill. Again, we mentioned this is a diesel engine chassis. So the door is right here. It is only a fill on one side, but it does accept the regular size pump handle for just regular diesel cars or the slightly larger one for trucks and bigger vehicles. One thing that's different here, and we're not entirely sure why yet, is that this RV does not require DEF or the urea injection system. So it is a diesel engine and this is a fairly new chassis, but I guess their emissions requirements here are not quite the same. And so we haven't had to use that at all. That pretty much sums up our home for the past several weeks. We've been extremely comfortable in these wilderness motorhome rentals. Uh, the Versner motorhomes are definitely a higher quality unit, so that definitely made our time here very, very nice. And we hope you enjoyed your tour. And as always, safe travels, and thanks for watching.